business to take care of. Okay, new news. One of my patients sent me an email saying that the potential association between drinking green tea and birth defects had been explained. Well, I have to admit, I did not know there was a potential association, but the um, antioxidant that's the big effective molecule in green tea is something called epigallocinin. <laughs> Epigalasticin, galab is something. And it is a chemical which interferes with dihydrofolate reductase, which is a chemical in your body that metabolizes the vitamin folate. And we know there's a big link between the vitamin folate and birth defects. One of the most tragic birth defects that you can imagine is a child born without the adequate development of the brain and the head. And that's called anencephaly. And it's very clear that women with low folate can have a higher incidence of anencephaly. So a researcher has found that the epigalacosin that's in green tea can inhibit dihydrofolate reductase, so there's a possibility that there might be an association. Now, uh, other researchers have done studies where they've given huge quantities of the epigalacosin to mice and to pregnant mice and not found any kind of toxicity. So if there's an association, it's going to be small and probably taking folate should be able to take care of that and that's what's one of the primary components of children's vitamins. But since we're such big proponents of green tea, we'd like to have some new guidelines, which is be careful about drinking green tea if you're planning a pregnancy. Be careful about drinking green tea if you're planning pregnancy. If you're planning pregnancy, discuss that ahead of time with your gynecologist and plan the pregnancy. And as we recommend, you should have your yearly blood tests, which will include a whole variety of vitamins and minerals, but also includes folate. Now, since we've done over 5,000 cases, I have thousands and thousands of folate levels on all my patients. And we've never seen a low folate. So it's pretty unusual to get a low folate if you have a healthy diet and you take your vitamins, as we recommend. But our advice to our patients is be careful out there. If you're planning a pregnancy, discuss with your gynecologist and maybe not drink green tea, although that's, I think, still controversial. Uh, take your multivitamins. Make sure you get your blood tests ahead of time to see and make certain that before you plan to conceive a child, your folate levels are normal. So that's the new latest update, hot off the presses, and we'll put that out on the videos today. And um, We do actually have a future uh, medical doctor here with us today. Does that sound right as far as my... Uh, Interpretation. So, uh, is that, do you know more than I do about the folate and birth defects? And well, it's exactly what I hadn't heard about the green tea association. So I'll go read about that. You have to look, kind of can correct me on that. But that's I, I actually did. There's some really high dose studies where they gave this epigalacticin to um, to mice with no toxicity, and even to uh, mice um, who were pregnant. And uh, only when you gave 200 milligrams per kilogram of this stuff and uh, you'd have to drink, like, I think it's 40 gallons of green tea a day to get that much green tea in. Uh, then the, the, the baby mice has started to be slightly smaller. So if you're drinking 40 gallons of green tea a day, stop it. <laughs> so, but, uh, so I think it's okay. But it is something, I mean, birth defects, that time of development of the new child is so critical. We want to pay attention to any kind of hint of problems like that and be aware of it and certainly alert our patients to that because we're big proponents of green tea. And so people go out and drink alcohol instead. No, so don't do that. Just get, don't try this at home. Um, the green tea, I read that um, there's a difference between the green tea that's in America versus like the Japanese green tea. Can you like explain that? Because it said like it is the younger 
Uh, yeah, I is that don't. A special kind of green tea we're supposed to be drinking. That's my question. No, that's a good question. So, what about green tea in general? Green tea in general is like magic beans. I mean, it's incredible. It prevents cancer. It prevents cancer of the stomach. It helps block the H. pylori infection. Helps protect men for against prostate cancer. It helps you lose weight. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like the Boy Scout oath. You know, thrifty, brave, clean, neat, hardworking. You know, it's just like it's everything. Uh, and the interesting thing is there's uh, the more research that seems to be done seems to confirm that this is a good substance to be part of our diet. Um, now there's a funny thing in that green tea is the same leaf that's in our regular iced tea that kind of those of us from North Carolina and the, and the South know and love, you know. But the same leaf is, has slightly changed in it's just drying and curing and that seems to change everything. So that when green tea is compared to black tea in many studies, although green tea is protective against cancers and things like that, black tea is not. Now there are some advantages. There's a, something called threonine that's in black tea that's also good. Um, but m in many of the studies, the green tea is not as good as the black tea. So the different um, brands and types might make a difference, but I haven't seen any research that proves that. So I think green tea is green tea is green tea. and you have to be careful that you don't overdo things. We're not trying to, you know, just moving everybody from Coca-Cola and iced tea and Crystal Light to green tea is a big move. And I think if you've done that, the research supports that that's really good for your health, good for your stomach, good for your gut. And I don't think that I have seen a lot of research there's big differences in the various types of green tea. I have seen a couple of things which are very annoying about white tea actually being better than green tea, and I can't get my head around that yet, so I'm not going to say anything about that. But there might actually be a difference. But the white tea is the least processed, so it's, it goes from a white leaf to a green leaf to a black leaf during processing. But I'm not emotionally prepared to go there yet, so there, there have only been a few studies on that. Green tea is remarkable. There are hundreds of articles that this antioxidant, epigalactosin, may actually make mice and people live longer. It causes weight loss. It's just a really good thing. It's just, it's the opposite of trans fats, you know. It's the opposite of smoking cigarettes. It's just a really good thing. And the more research you find, it just continues to be good. And uh, so I've seen a lot of research on it. It's very impressive. The list of things it does is very impressive. So green tea is good. Is it the Starbucks one? Um, <laughs> let me say that, first of all, I realize many of my patients, you can see them get angry as I'm talking. You know, they, I, I talk about, you know, no more Diet Coke, no more soda pop, no more coffee, and I say you have to now drink green tea, and people, you can see them in the aisles begin to shift and things like this. And So I tell this one story. We were in clinic one day, and uh, a lady... Um, raised her hand to ask about the green tea and giving up coffee. So I told her this story, which I took to be amusing. Not so much for her. Anyway, so I said, I meet every day with people who are overweight. I meet with them privately, I meet with them publicly, and we sit and talk about obesity. We talk about the risks and the benefits and of losing weight and things like that. And the process of talking to someone who's overweight is interesting because it's so similar time after time. Almost the first thing after I'm introduced, the patient wants to tell me that they're not lazy, they're not a bad person, that they really have tried to lose weight, so I won't judge them as being weak or something like that to start off with. And then, oftentimes, the next step is going to be, I can't tell you, Dr. Rutledge, how awful it is to be heavy. And oftentimes that's associated with tears. You know, it's this is such an awful experience. You can never, you know, being a thinner, uh, medium-sized person, slightly overweight person, <laughs> uh, you can never understand what it's like to be very heavy. And as I say, oftentimes come tears during that description as they talk about the times where they've lost out on promotions, haven't had the opportunity to do things they wanted, play with children, go on rides, go and do things. And that is a very difficult part of the presentation that usually happens. And then the next part is, all, again, almost everyone says this, and I would do anything 
to get rid of this weight. I would really, I would, you know, give my right arm, swim the deepest ocean, climb the highest mountain, you know. And so this is where then I dive in right on cue, and I say, hold it, hold it, hold it. I've got a short, simple operation. Uh, you're going to have tremendous success. It'll cure your diabetes and all these things. And the only thing you have to do is, you know, you have to give up, you know, coffee and soda pop and drink green tea. And oftentimes there's a pause and they go, oh, well, I can't do that. <laughs> and you go, but just a minute ago, weren't you saying... The, uh, so it, it's kind of funny and I, I will say, gee, here is this uh, person in one moment claiming how terrible this disability of being morbidly obese is, and the next moment says, well, I can't give up Diet Coke. Okay. Well, to me, that seems kind of a disparity. It seems it's kind of amusing when you think about it because you're saying it's so important to you, but you can't give up Diet Coke. Well, this lady didn't find it amusing. She went home, and she happened to be part of a mailing list that I was part of, and she wrote, I met my doctor today, and he was really mean to me. I don't really think much of his personality, but I'm going to have his, his surgery anyways. You know, and I wrote back, hi. <laughs> but anyways, the point is that uh, there are many of these things we take away from you, but green tea is one of the things that unfortunately seems to be a wonderful, healthy choice as a drink, but to me it's not to my taste. And soda pop, I mean, I would right now... I would say we could break up right this minute. If I could suddenly find out, so if suddenly came through the research that cigarettes, coffee, and Diet Coke were good for you, I would break up this meeting now and go out and have a cigarette and a cup of coffee and a Diet Coke. So. No, I'm saying, uh, my question is, uh, stopping coffee is not a bad thing, but the green tea in Starbucks, is it a decent green tea to drink? Well, that's kind of like her question. Um, are there is there any any variation in the value of the green tea? I am not aware of any research in the types. Of, as you know, there are all kinds of different. At, at Starbucks, there's the there are two kinds: Zen and something else. So they have two kinds of green tea, and I don't know enough that there's a difference between the green teas. Now we had somebody here from Turkey, and he was saying the green tea there is really good and. Uh, Trish says the green tea at Brooklyn Bagels is good, and I think the green tea at Starbucks is too bitter for me. But anyways, I don't know enough about that to give you a detailed description. I think green tea in general is a good choice. And then people say, well, what do I put in it? Splenda. That's what I do. Is, is Splenda a good idea? No. 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 So what's a good idea? Zero, nothing, <laughs> ice. Well, that's, I'm glad you asked that. That's